Welcome to the first ever Prospect Football Weekly. I'm here with Coach Sebastian. Coach, thank you very much for joining us today. Paul, thank you for having us. Will do. How are you feeling about this new season? We're excited about the uh, 2016 season, uh, 2016 team. Uh, we're looking really forward to obviously uh, getting on the field on Friday night, playing Hinsdale South, uh, and getting an opportunity to see uh, the work that we've put in the last eight weeks finally showing up on a Friday night. Speaking of those last eight weeks, what do you think you've learned the most from last year's team going into this year? I think the biggest thing that we've learned as a program, as a group, is to continue to make sure that our leaders are taking control. Uh, our senior leaders last year did a really nice job. Uh, we're hoping that you know our seniors this year uh, have really learned the lessons from last year's group. Uh, you know, guys like you know Dante Sakela, uh, Billy Matzik, Andy Shaffis have done a really nice job getting ourselves prepared. So we're you know we're really trying to take the lessons of what we learned, uh, the good and the bad last year, and making sure that, that we uh, bring that over to game one here. And then speaking of building on those senior leaders, how do they perform in summer league and the team as a whole during summer league this year? You know, we didn't have as many passing leagues as we've had in the past. Uh, so it, it was uh, a good experience in some ways, and, and it leads to a little trepidation because you haven't got maybe as much work as you normally do. But we went to Tuscola again this year. Uh, that was a really good experience. Kids competed really well down there. Uh, you know, we had some really nice things happen. Uh, a kid like Zach Gleason had a really nice uh, series down there where you know, we played four games and he had something like 23, 24 catches between the four games. Uh, Chase Cummings really came through really nicely down there. Uh, our defensive backfield had an interception in each of the four games. So uh, it, it was nice to see them be aggressive and competitive. Uh, playing those games and they got better every time we went out so that's a good sign for us going forward and then during summer camp this year what do you think is the biggest thing you've learned about this team as a whole uh, that they've had to deal with a little bit of adversity uh, not everything has gone uh, according to plan necessarily not everything has worked exactly how they were maybe hoping it would in the summer uh, we've had some rough moments and they've responded to it, and they've gotten better from it. They've learned from it. I think one of the best things that we've seen is the fact that as game week has approached, much like in the summer when we start you know, competing in, in a passing league, their compete level is really high. As the, you know, the game week has approached, and we've hit Monday and Tuesday in terms of practice, these young men have had great energy this week. So we're really excited. I think they're uh, a group of kids that they kind of hopefully are going to rise to the moment and, and be successful in that moment. So we're looking forward to the opportunity. And then uh, because of that adversary, adversity, how did you see your team grow this summer? I think it just forced them to have to start to lean on each other uh, and not necessarily uh, just depend solely on individual talents or individual abilities. I think what it forced them to do is have to really work with each other, build on teamwork to become a better football team in the grand scheme of things. And, and I think that's going to pay them off in the long run because you can – Try to depend on a coaching staff as much as you want to at times, and some teams do, some teams don't. But they're not going to be going out and playing on a Friday night with you. Uh, it's going to be the 11 guys that are in a huddle. So to be able to work through some of that adversity and solve it as a team has been very helpful, and I think that will pay off on a Friday night. And then two of your key contributors from last year, Matt Drew and Bobby Jarrows, obviously they graduated. Who have you seen stepped into their roles throughout practice, and who do you expect to take a bigger role this year to fill their shoes? I, you know, Andrew Schaffes has stepped in at the quarterback position. Uh, he's done a really nice job. He lost a little bit of his junior year to a foot injury. Uh, so he's excited to get back onto a field. Uh, he's worked really hard. Uh, he's going to bring a little different dynamic maybe than what Matty brought. They both have kind of their own unique skills. Um, but I think he's done really well. He's stepped into, to, into that position. We're going to really rotate four or five different running backs to step in for Bobby. Uh, you know, Bobby's a unique talent uh, in terms of what he could do. So we're really going to kind of rotate guys through. Uh, you know, a kid like Dante Sakela, who you're going to get to meet here in a little while, is going to be one of those guys who's going to be kind of at the forefront at it, but he's also playing defense. Uh, so, you know, Brandon Inori, who's a junior, uh, Connor Heimdall, who's a junior, both going to step in. Michael Schaffis, Andrews, uh, little brother um, is going to step in and play a little bit too, and that's Stuart Stefanos, who's a senior. We're going to, you know, work with five different kids, and minus Michael, who's about five eleven, six feet tall, they're all about five seven, five eight. So between the, you know, those four guys running behind three guys that stand six three, six seven, six six, you know, we're hoping you know people just kind of lose them in there. So uh, you know, we think those kids will kind of do it by committee. 
And then how are you looking for your team to grow in the early non-conference schedule heading into the conference schedule this year? You know, I think the biggest thing is just we've got to get a lot of kids different repetitions. You know, we can't depend on um, necessarily playing 12 or 13 kids and a lot of kids playing both ways early. We really need to work going forward here on uh, trying to play 22 different starters game one. You know, and you know, you know, a kid like Dante is going to start on defense. He might not start on offense. He's going to play. But trying to get as many kids in the rotation as possible. The more kids we can get work, the better prepared, the more experience we're going to have once we start getting to the East. Uh, but the biggest thing for us right now is just worried about game one, uh, and that's got to be our focus. All right. Thank you, Coach. We will see you later. Next, we are bringing on Dante Sakela. Welcome back. I'm your host, Paul Evers, for Prospect Football Weekly, and we are now joined by running back Dante Sakela. Dante, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right, so... Last season, you had a smaller role beginning the season, but as the season progressed, uh, you seemed to kind of take advantage of your opportunities and you started to gain a bigger role for yourself. How are you going to take the momentum you had last season and apply it to the start of this season? Well, I think one thing that comes from last season for most of our our starters is experience and confidence. And once you get that confidence going back on the field, it's just easier. You're you're flowing fast. You're just you're just doing better all around. So I think that's going to help a lot. Last year you played behind a great running back in Bobby Jaros. What what are you going to take from him? What did he teach you? What have you learned from him that you're going to apply to this season in a bigger role? I think one of the biggest things that Bob taught me was you got to always stay positive. No matter what happens, you got to stay positive. You got to know what you're doing. You can't mess up. If you do mess up, just stay positive. We'll go with the flow, and you're going to be fine eventually. And then what what skill do you think you developed the most over the summer to make you a better running back? I think I learned over the summer how to stay calmer and more relaxed in the backfield. I sometimes just get you mess up, you get heated, and then you just freak out, and then you start messing up a bunch. I feel like I just, I've learned how to stay calm and just stay relaxed and just do what I got to do, and know my job. Then, obviously, you're a little bit of a smaller running back compared to some of the bigger uh, running backs in the MSL or just across high school football in general. How do you overcome that? I usually use that as a motivation for me. People usually look at me as a small guy, which I am, and that I can't do much and that I'm inexperienced, I'm small, I can't do anything. So I use that as motivation for me to be better, be better than anybody else and just be the best in my role. Then how is your backfield coming together along with you, Andrew Schaffes, and anyone else looking for carries this year? You know, it started real slow in the summer. It started off really slow, but as the summers progressed, I think all five of us, we've gotten better. We started to learn our aiming points, all, of, all the things we need to know, ball security, one-step cuts. We've very much progressed since the summer began, and I think it's going to be a big thing come game one. Then, knowing that a big part of your success in the running game is your offensive line, how do you feel about your offensive line this year? Uh, I'm very confident in our f offensive line this year. We got guys like Billy Matzik, Vince Shields, and Alex Pelcheski all stepping up. Billy's really been that leader on the line that we need, coming, making guys come through that you wouldn't expect to come through, like Brennan Keene, six foot, 180 pounds, not a big guy, just coming through for the team. And it's guys like that we're going to need and you can depend upon in the game. And then you're – the senior captain, so how are you planning to lead this team and what role do you see yourself taking as a leader? Uh, you know, I just plan to take control, you know, just keep guys calm, not not too much of anything else, just make sure that guys are getting calm, we might get scored on, we might be losing 14 nothing. it doesn't mean you're out of the game, you just got to keep guys in the loop, make sure guys' energy's going, you're never out of it till it's over, so. Then looking at your team this summer, what do you think is going to be the biggest strength this year for your team? Uh, I think our biggest strength is going to be our knowledge. I think that if we study the game, we know the game, we know our opponents better than they know us, we're going to be able to flow to the ball, be faster than our opponent, more disciplined, and we're just going to be a better team this year. All right. Thank you, Dante. We'll be right back with special guest Chris Barnum of the Prospect Marching Knights. We are now joined by special guest director Chris Barnum. Thank you for joining us today, Mr. Barnum. Thanks for having me. All right, so year after year in competitions, the Prospect Marching Knights are very successful. How do you keep that success level up in your program? Uh, you know, it's really a lot of factors. You know, it, it's everything from the people who design our shows each year, the instructors uh, who come out and work with our students, but it always, always comes back to the students, the kids. Uh, they're the ones putting in the great work. They're the ones who go out and, and do it every year. What are you most proud of when it comes to the accomplishments of your band? 
Um, you know, it's hard to sort of, you know, pick one thing. I, I think something that I, I certainly am proud of is the consistency that we have. Um, you know, we're, we're each year we try to come out every single year and not only um, sort of meet the expectations and the bar that we've set for ourselves, but in some way raise it, do something different, do something new. And so I think that consistency piece um, is, a, is, is really challenging and something really proud of. You talked about the kids and the members of the band. You expect a lot of time for them to put into their work and to getting the shows ready. How do you get the kids to buy into such a program that demands so much out of them? Yeah, I don't know. I, you know, you'd have to ask them. I think uh, I think a lot of it comes from the older members of the ensemble, sort of just setting that example and, uh, you know, trying to promote that environment that this is what we do, this is how we work to achieve excellence. And uh, they also, with our new members, uh, teach them strategies. They, they teach them, this is how you balance these, these things outside of school along with your schoolwork. So, uh, you know, we really lean heavily on our leaders in the group to, to help maintain that. And then PMK has been recognized for their excellence. They've been selected to play in this year's Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Sure. What kind of undertaking is it to plan a trip like that for your band? Um, it's been huge. We've already been planning that trip for about a year and a half. Um, so we've been working on that trip a ton. Um, it's going to be a, an amazing week in New York. And, uh, you know, it culminates in this, in this huge performance. And so we're, we've been working on the trip planning, and uh, we've also been working really hard on preparing for the actual performance in the parade. So, yeah, about a year and a half of planning has already gone into it. We leave uh, in three months. We perform 90 days from today from the filming, so it's going to be great. And then just curious, anything in plan for this trip that you have already planned out? Any surprises we should be looking for? In um, you, know, I, you know, I don't know about surprises, but uh, the, the performance that you'll see on TV when you're watching the parade at home is going to be a completely new show, completely separate from what we do in the fall. So we're working on a completely new repertoire, completely new choreography, a whole new, um, you know, whole new performance. So it won't be anything like you'd see on a Friday night. It's going to be a, a whole new performance. So uh, we have a lot of work to do to get that ready. And speaking of Friday nights, how does it feel to have your band playing alongside such a popular student event in the football team, being able to take the halftime and be able to show your show to most of the school? Um, it's great. You know, uh, I, I think one of the things that we get to do all the time is represent the school and be there for the school, whether it's in parades, local parades. I mean, certainly something like Friday night football. I mean, what's more quintessential American event than Friday night football at your high school. I mean, that's what it's all about. You know, it's the band, it's the cheerleaders, and we're all there to support the team and, and be there together, get the whole school together. So being a part of that um, is just a, a really neat thing that we get to do, and, and it's really important to us, and I love it. And then what goes into PMK behind the scenes that you think would really surprise people? <laughs> You know, it, it, probably a lot of what we do would, would surprise people. You know, by the time most people see us, we're out there putting on this whole show together. Um, but the coordination it takes to put together that eight and a half minute show we do at halftime, um, it's really amazing. You know, when we, when we start teaching our students, we, we teach them every single thing from literally how to stand still and look great. We start with posture and standing still. Then it's how to take one step and look exactly like that kid next to you. Or play one note just so. And we build and build and build on that into, into what you see. And uh, so I think people would probably be pretty surprised to see the really methodical work that goes into what becomes a pretty big production. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Barnum. We will be right back with Coach Sebastian to take a look at this week's game. We are back here with Coach Sebastian, and we are here to preview this Friday's matchup against Hinsdale South. Now, last year, Hinsdale South made a deep run in the state playoffs. What kind of challenge do you see this for your team as their opening game? Uh, it's a great challenge. You want to always try to play someone who is a uh, quality opponent uh, your opening weekend. You want to be able to obviously have a situation where you're learning a little bit more about your team uh, right off the bat. You don't want to have an opponent where uh, you're not really sure what type of team you have because it's too easy of a game. So it, it's a great opportunity to learn about ourselves. Hinsdale South has been a quality program for many years now. Uh, they went to the state semifinals in 6A last year, lost a heartbreaker to Crete Moni. Uh, so they, you know, they've got experience, they've got an understanding of what it takes to, to get to the highest level. So it's going to be a great opportunity for our kids to, right off the bat to understand a little bit more about where we're at as a football program. In terms of preparing for this week's game, uh, Hinsdale South is overturning a lot of its starters. Mm -hmm. What kind of challenge does that, does, uh, does that give to your team where there isn't much film on the kids they will be playing on Friday night? Uh, it presents a little bit of a challenge. Um, schematically, you you know pretty much anticipate they'll do the same stuff because it's been successful. We don't really change necessarily based on that. 
Uh, so you can show them scheme, you can show them understanding of this is what they're playing defensively, offensively. This is kind of the mold of the kid they want fitting into those uh, positions and situations. Um, but yeah, there's not necessarily a lot of kids that uh, are returning, uh, but they got some kids who got a lot of experience because they had some games they, they beat some people uh, pretty early in a game and were able to play some of their backups. So, uh, But they, they've got some good kids coming back. Uh, Deontay Curry's a, a linebacker who's a senior. Uh, you know, he, he was a very good linebacker last year. Uh, Aaron Woods plays. Uh, defensive line is going to double as an offensive lineman as well this year. Uh, they have two different quarterbacks, um, one who's a senior, uh, the Rudolph kid, and then uh, I think it's Justin Kozla, who's a transfer junior. Uh, so those are going to be some of the unknowns. that You know, the first series on both sides of the ball, we're just going to have to adjust to and kind of prepare for and then move from there. If, as long as we understand schematically what we're, we're trying to do and what they're trying to do, uh, you, you kind of adjust to personnel as you go. And as long as we focus on our job, uh, the rest of that stuff will kind of fall into place. And telling your team to focus on their job, obviously without not giving too much away, uh, what do you expect your team to focus on for Friday night's game? Well, I think just focusing on the play that's in front of them. Uh, I think that becomes the most important thing. You know, We're uh, an offense that is, uh, in this new iteration, a little bit more ball control, not as such a big play offense, even though we you know, don't mind a 60 or 70 yard touchdown run here and there. Um, <laughs> So we're going to try to control the ball with our offense. We're going to try to put our defense into good positions. We're going to ask our defense to get uh, themselves in a position where they're swarming to the ball, 11 kids. Uh, and, and our special teams are going to be huge in terms of uh, creating field position. You know, to have a kid like Jack Proven back this year, uh, kicking for you know, obviously he, had, he got injured early in the, his junior year. Uh, Jack's a weapon, and you know he's going to help us with field position dramatically. So just focusing on doing our job, our responsibility, I think is going to be huge. Uh, as we go forward into this game. You talked earlier about rotating five running backs in the backfield. How do you expect to distribute the carries between everyone this Friday? I think a lot of it's just going to depend on the game uh, and where we're at at that point. Uh, I think a lot of it's going to just be kind of a feel for it as you're going. Um, so, you know, If a kid kind of gets hot a little bit, we're going to keep kind of working him into the rotation. You know, If someone's playing a little bit more on defense, you know, with Stu, uh, Dante, Michael possibly all playing some defensive reps. Brandon could potentially play some defensive reps. If we're using them a little bit more on defense, we might not use them as much in the backfield. So I think a lot of it's going to just be based on the flow of the game and letting the game kind of come to them. Andrew Schaff is this Friday. He's starting his first game at quarterback. What advice have you been giving him? What are you telling him that he needs to focus on in this Friday's game? I think the biggest thing you, you want to understand for anybody who's starting a quarterback in their first game, no matter how old they are, you know, and Andrew's a senior, is if you're expecting them to be able to carry your team or do it on their own, uh, you're not going to be helping them out. You know, we've, we've made a big emphasis to our offense that we have to do it as a unit, as a team, uh, and, and allow Andy to kind of get in the flow of the game just like all the other kids would. So, um, you know, we're just looking for Andy to, to stay within himself and do his job. And as long as he does his job and he reads the offense the way he's been doing in, in practice, uh, I think we're going to be okay. And then this year, it's the first year of changing the non-conference schedule around, not playing so many MSL West teams. Are you definitely happier with the teams you're going to see in the non-conference? Do you feel this is going to be a better challenge for your team to set them up for the conference schedule this you year? You know, I, th I think, Paul, it's just different. And I think that's the most important thing. It's different. You know, um, you know, we still play one MSL West team. You know, we get to play Barrington week two. Uh, we get to make the, you know, the trip out there. Uh, but... but you know, sometimes you like variety. You like to play different teams. You know, we, we played for eight years down at Grove North as our opener. And after a while, you know, that game kind of got stale. It got old, I think, for both teams. And we kind of were like, oh, let's go find something new. And, you know, and since then we've played York, played Glenbrook South for four years. Uh, we originally were supposed to play Jacobs, but, you know, the Fox Valley had a, a conference shakeup and they had to drop us. You know, so it's kind of exciting to play someone new, something different. There's some trepidation in the unknown. But there's also some real excitement to the unknown of playing someone different. So to get an opportunity to play a Niles North this year, a Glenbrook North, who we have some familiarity with because we played them in a playoff game in 2012, is kind of fun. And we're looking forward to those opportunities when that week comes along. Uh, not that you didn't enjoy playing some of the traditional rivalries, playing a Palatine, playing a friend, uh, playing a team like uh, Conan, Hoffman Estate, Schaumburg. And we'll still get to see them, just not as often. Uh, but I think for you know schools, especially playing football these days, you want to try to play as many like-sized schools as you possibly can. 
this CSL MSL setup is going to allow us to do that and allow all our schools to do that. I think for the you know some of those West schools, they've talked about the fact that it's going to help make sure that they're prepared the best it possibly can be uh, for deep playoff runs. So they're excited about it. I think we're excited about it because again, it's hopefully going to do some of the same stuff for us. We're not playing you know poor teams. Now as North is a state quarterfinalist last year. Glenbrook North is a perennial state you know playoff qualifier. Our first four games are against teams who all played in the state playoffs and played deep into it last year. So we've got to work cut out for ourselves. So it's it's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be different. And, and sometimes different is good. All right. Thank you very much, Coach. Good luck on Friday. This is Paul Evers for Prospect Football Weekly, and we will see you next week.